So guys, behind me, as you can see today, I've picked up the keys, this very nice grey key to this Super Sport Punto Abarth behind me. The thing is about this car is I don't think anybody actually is searching to buy one. They're a little bit of the underdog, maybe an underrated car or hot hatch that you could buy. I just haven't seen many of these around and where I'm from on the Isle of Wight, there is two of these. The other one is just a basic normal Abarth. This one though is a Super Sports edition and as you can see, the Camper Volo Grey, it's not Nardo Grey, it's called Campovolo, is absolutely stunning on this little Punto. See what this one behind me is like at 210 brake horsepower and see if they're worth buying. Talk about pricing, MPG, and as ever, we'll do a performance test at the end of the video. As a young driver, you want something that looks pretty aggressive from the factory, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on one of these to make them look aggressive because from the factory, they actually are quite swole. They have wide arches, they have a big front bumper. This one has a Maxton design front splitter and the black bits with this Camper Volo grey really break the car up. In fact, I like all the air pockets and stuff. You've got one down here. But I have spoke to the owner and a couple of people have actually cut all these vents to make them actually usable on this car. This one also has some custom headlights up front which have a very nice swoopy indicator. But if you were to buy an Abarth Punto, they all have this body kit. This Super Sports one is pretty much no different to any other Abarth Punto that you may buy. So I want to highlight this point of the car because I think it looks one of the best features on it. It has these lovely rotor wheels, very cool design, but it has these 808 rs on it, which make this car look so thick. And with every Abarth product that they seem to be making at the moment, they all have Brembo brakes as standard. Inside the cabin, the seats, the seats, are glorious in one of these. Full Sabelt bucket seats with ample bolstering for anybody that wants to throw this car around, you ain't going nowhere. But as a 30 year old, obviously I'm gonna point out the fact that my back hurts in them. Just one of those things, every single Sabelt seat in and a bath is fantastic, but slightly uncomfortable. It's just because I've got a bad back. So this has an ice box aftermarket stereo, which is probably the way to go in one of these. The original multimedia interface in these, little bit dated. So going for a aftermarket head unit is the way to go. Also, this one actually came with a factory, genuine Fiat phone and sat nav holder that is right here, incredibly ugly though. Pretty cool to see that from the factory, but it does look like something from the early 2000s that BMW would have put in their seven series. Right next to the Fiat branded phone thingy there's a little uh, pop-up cubby hole where you can get at least four pounds in change in down here the selection button from normal into sport mode is quite interesting actually because it's a toggle so it toggles up into sports and then you would come back. It does to me feel like you're putting the landing gear down on a Boeing 747 though. It's very, very strange, but pretty cool at the same time. Just throw it in sport, throw it in normal, landing gear up, landing gear down. The thing to point out though about this sport mode is that when you're actually driving it and you push it into sport, the whole car looks goes like that, as if you've just tipped a massive bucket of water over it. Other things to point out, chief among which is there's no central cup holders, but there is cup holders in the doors. So practicality side for cup holders is there, although slightly limited. Other than that though, the climate control is absolutely lovely. Down here you have a footrest for the passenger, which I think is really cool. And in the back you have, and in the back you have two seat belts, no third seat belt, so something to point out there. But you do have cup holders, which is a good shout. I will get into this once we do the driving portion, but the seat itself is not high as high as a normal 500 bar seating position, but it is a little bit higher than I was expecting. That is mostly down to the seats though, but it does mean that as a young driver, you can see everything. You can see the bonnet, you can see the back. Coming out of the bonnet, we have the 1.4 litre turbocharged multi-air engine. From the factory, the 1.4 multi-air has a Garrett GT1446 turbocharger on it, but this one mods 
Woods Wides in the engine bay, it has the AirTech front mount intercooler, TMC Motorsport induction kit, TMC Motorsport decat downpipe, a power flow exhaust system, and TMC have remapped this car to 210 brake horsepower. So a lot of power going through this little 1.4. I think it's relatively easy to find mods for this engine because there's a lot of cars that actually carry this engine in the above range. Mods aren't too hard to come across. Because of this engine though, it means you get 160 pound a year road tax. Your insurance is cheap because it's a 1.4. And this one right now, while I'm enjoying myself on a B road, is still doing 25 MPG. So that's with the pop and bang as well. So that's actually not too bad. So I think that's a huge selling point there is that people gloss past the fact that this was actually a 1.4. For a younger driver, it means that it's actually cheaper to insure, cheaper to tax, cheaper to run. Now another video where I'm going to explain that buying these wide shoes these days sometimes for a hot hatch isn't a good idea. Now shoe test you can sort of get your shoe there if you've got big Yeezys on and it does mean that you can actually get to all of the pedals without stepping on your own foot. The thing is when you actually depress the clutch and you want to go there with it where I would usually press the clutch it's actually touching can you hear that? The foot rest on the side. But if you're not willing to rest your foot and you want to just blip down your car as you change gear and all that sort of stuff, it's very, very easy in this thing. Consumer advice as usual. But that's enough of me waffling on. Let's go and see what this turbocharged 1.4 litre, 210 brake horsepower bath is really like on the road. Driving the Punto Abarth Super Sport. First things first, how does it feel? Now I think that this car especially feels incredibly thick on the road, mainly because of the 808Rs up front. Just from the steering and, and the way it rides, it feels so thick because of the tires. It is a lot wider and a lot bigger than I was actually expecting it to be. There's a lot of room inside, which is a big talking point. The Abarths, you know, 500s, not a lot of room inside. The Mark 7 Fiestas, not a lot of room inside. So price point wise, if you're looking at one of these, 6,000 pounds for a basic Abarth Punto, all the way up to, you know, over to 10 to 12 for the example that I'm driving today. But I think the talking point here is why there isn't more of them around. Now you hear a lot of turbo up front, you hear pops and bangs from the rear end. And do you know what? Sat here right now, do you know what it sounds like? A 106 GTI with a Pugs Port exhaust system. That's exactly what this car sounds like. The burbles and cracks are of that generation. And I know there'd be someone saying, why do you think that that sounds like a 106 GTI? But if you grew up around 106 GTIs, you know exactly how that sounds and the experience that I'm having right now from the rear end. But that's down to the Plafo exhaust system. turbocharger when you do come on song you can actually hear it up front you can hear it whining that Garrett 1446 that's actually a factory turbocharger that's put on these Punto Abarths the seats are fantastic but you know if you're old like me you're gonna notice how unsprung and unsupportive the foam is in them although they are supportive if you are willing to Throw into a corner. <laughs> so for that side of stuff, they're fantastic seats. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly what I was talking about a minute ago, where you go from normal mode, and my foot is in exactly the same position, and off, and on. It completely transforms the throttle response literally night and day is so so sensitive the thing is you don't have to actually put as much work in in the throttle pedal it's quite easy for it to come on boost it comes on boost at around three and a half thousand rpm and the gurgle down that's been mapped in by TMC. Fever it a little bit, it sounds phenomenal. Like an old school rally car. Mm. 
it gurgles more than it pops, which is something I sort of prefer. The pops and bangs of this generation, unfortunately, means that they sound incredibly forced. This, though, just a little bang and blah, 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 blah. I will say, though, if you're after one of these, look out for one that's had the multi-air system either serviced or replaced. I think it's quite hard to pin down why these cars didn't take off and why the Fiestas and, you know, Clios of this generation really are the ones to have and driving it today it doesn't really feel a lot different to a Clio I think it's a little bit heavier or at least feels heavier and although it hasn't got as big an engine in this Punto I think it still has a lot of grunt it is a curveball car this car because I don't think a lot of people sit around and say yeah I want to buy a hot hatch I'm going to buy it a Bath Punto it's not something that people say that means that they're rare they're rarer in the sense that they're not rare to buy and they're not rare if you see one but they're rare for someone to actually want one and that's what I was talking to the owner about he said he'd had one before you know a base one 1.4 and he wanted to go for something a little bit spicier that's why this car exists and the fact that you can buy this package for say sub ten thousand pound for a good mileage one with all the mods and a slightly funky color means that it's actually a really good buy this for the younger generation